the computer. I'm here with Professor Sharona Gordon, Professor of bio, uh, Biology and Biophysics at the University of Washington, or Physiology and Biophysics, University of Washington. Shalom Sharona, who happens to be my sister. Sharona, um, I was on the uh, a conversation with our older sister, Ariella, who's a scientist in Israel, and her impression is that thing, this thing is really, really dangerous. She actually urged me to get on a plane and come back to Israel. Tell us, what is your impression, and, and based on your understanding of the science, what, what is going on here with this coronavirus? The, yeah. Hi, Nehemia. First of all, a plane is probably the most dangerous place that you can be okay. because uh, microbes spread on airplanes like wildfire. Okay. Uh, so especially for people who are in a risk group, like uh, being elderly or have underlying health conditions, don't get on a plane if you can okay. avoid it. Okay. So the, the virus is, is deadly. It's a really bad virus. But that said, our lives don't have to come to a complete halt. If okay. we practice good hygiene and social distancing, then we can go about our business with relative safety. So what does that mean? Yeah. Uh, this virus is transmitted most of the time through the large droplets that come out of a sick person's nose and mouth. Okay. And so anyone who's sick should absolutely be isolated from other people. Is that like what they say, you know, when they, there's expressions, uh, say it, don't spray it? Like there's actually droplets coming out of your mouth and nose? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. So, so, well, here, so, so here was my impression. Like if I get in an elevator and there was a sick person there 20 minutes before, I'm going to get sick. And you're saying that's not true. Is that right? Well, it's possible that you would get sick. Right. It's, it's possible that you would get sick by being in an elevator that somebody had been in previously but it's not likely okay. that's right it's not likely hmm. can you hear me uh your image froze um okay I'm not sure oh there you are you're back excellent all right so you said it's not okay. likely so so what could, what should we be doing should we be um holding up in our in our houses or um, what is the proper procedure here, in your opinion, at this point? So do whatever your public health officials tell you in your city. Um, okay. Here in Seattle, uh, we are being told that if you can work from home, then that's the best thing. But if you need to go into work, that's okay, too. Uh, the public transportation system is considered safe. You should wash your hands as often as you can with soap and water, or at least mm -hmm. you don't have to uh, use your shirt tail or use a tissue to open the door handle. You don't to have press to? press the elevator button. You should use a tissue oh, or you your should. shirt sleeve okay. to touch things. Yes. I've been doing the elbow um, bump. Sure, use the elbow bump. Um, that, that works great. And stay six feet away from other people. And that really makes a difference staying six feet away from other people? Yes, it does. The particle's not magic. It doesn't fly all on its own. It's in liquid droplets that come out of people's noses and mouths. I mean, because so those liquid yeah. droplets do spray and they can go a few feet away when people speak. Yeah. But first of all, healthy people aren't making large liquid droplets, they're not sneezing and coughing. But second of all, if you stay six feet away, the droplets are unlikely to reach you. And you're saying someone who's non-asymptomatic, who doesn't have symptoms, um, they can't spread it? Is that what you're saying? Am I understanding no. what you're saying? No. Somebody who's asymptomatic can spread it. Oh, they can. Okay. If you kissed them. Oh. If they touched the elevator button, and then you touched the elevator button and licked your finger. <laughs> um, okay. But they don't have... Um, a lot of coughing and sneezing that would make the virus particles travel over to you. So and just so from breathing, they're not going to be able, they're not spreading it? Not if they're six feet away from you. Wow. Okay. Because some people have the attitude that I've, enc I've encountered people who said, look, I'm going to get it anyway. You know, I, I mean, we, life can't stop. We got to go on. Um, what happens if you do get it? What, is, what, like, what, what can one expect? Is it true that most people who get it have nothing more than the, a common cold or the, or the symptoms of a common cold. 
Um, yes, but what we're seeing in the US and in Italy is that 18% uh, of people who are hospitalized, so who are pretty seriously ill, yeah. are between uh, 45 and 55, and another 20 or so percent are between 55 and 65. Mm -hmm. So people my age are getting sick. Uh, people yeah. in their 20s are getting pretty sick. The younger folks are eventually recovering for the most part, but if you can avoid getting this virus, you should. I, I understand that even the people who recover, in, who are younger people, have scarring on their lungs. Is that right? It certainly can happen. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what are they doing at the University of Washington as a model of, of um, maybe what some businesses should do or how, how are they handling it over there? Right. So first of all, uh, people are switching to working in different shifts to reduce the density of workers. Okay. People are making sure that they stay six feet away from others at all wow. times. Wow. People are uh, disinfecting surfaces regularly with bleach, with alcohol, with Lysol spray, with ammonia. People are uh, not directly touching doorknobs, uh, washing their hands all the time, and then just taking other sensible precautions. If you see someone who's sneezing or coughing, turn around and go the other way. Okay, but you are coming into your laboratory, but the yes. classes are canceled, is that right? Or their classes right. are online? Classes are online because bringing yeah. together groups of 10 or more or even five or more people in some places yeah. is considered unsafe. Students sit right next to each other. They can't maintain that social distance. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on and telling us a little bit about the science. We appreciate it. Um, I understand you're going to be on CNN later today. What will they have you talking about on CNN? About the institutional response in the School of Medicine to COVID-19. Okay. And you had someone who was a colleague of yours who unfortunately passed away mm -hmm. from, from the virus. Tell yes. us just briefly about that. So Dr. Stephen Schwartz was a member of our faculty since, I believe, 1967. Wow. He that was before was, you were born, even. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So ancient history. Yeah. He, he was really quite an amazing guy, full of passion, wow. never hesitated to challenge people if he didn't agree with them mm -hmm. always fighting for the underdog always advocating for uh, people whose rights might be trampled on really just a great human being it's wow. really and how old was he when he i believe now? he was 78 wow okay all right wow all right well thank you Sh Sharona. shalom thank you love for you bye